All right, so this cooler is probably the most cooling that you can get into this case, the Terra. It's gonna sit right up against the side panel. The little teaser, do you have an NFA 12 by 25 millimeter fan underneath it? Welcome to Machines and More. So the L12S by 77 is a new cooler from Noctua. It's not a brand, brand new one per se. It's more of a revision or variant as Noctua considers it um, of the regular L12S. But in fact, the heat sink is changed. There's two additional heat pipes here in addition to being raised an additional five millimeters away from the motherboard. And that brings the heat sinks heat pipe count more in line with coolers like ID Cooling's IS67 XT and Thermal Rights AXP12067. These changes are actually meaningful and they can make it a more useful cooler in certain situations. So that's what we're gonna take a look at today. Real quick before I begin, big thanks to Nakra for providing the cooler. They sent us this guy all the way from Austria for the purposes of making this review at no cost to the channel. But as with all reviews on this channel, they are not paid for by the manufacturer. The manufacturer doesn't have input into the testing methodology and neither do they have any advanced knowledge of any of the review findings. And that's the standard that you can expect from this channel. So this one is called the L12S by 77 because it's 77 millimeters tall. And that is a slight departure from the original L12S, which stands at 72 millimeters. Both coolers do come with Noctua's NFA 12 by 15 millimeter fan, which is, wait for it, actually 17 millimeters with the bumpers. Um, it's important to note though, that the 72 or 77 millimeter height represents the lowest possible configuration. And with the L12 series, that's gonna be with the fan underneath your heatsink. And, and you can certainly put the fan on top of the heatsink if you have clearance. So you just need to add the thickness of the fan to that number. So either 72 or 77 millimeter, depending on which cooler you're, you're considering. One interesting choice uh, here is that the cooler ships with the fan installed to exhaust air away from the motherboard. This is not the typical configuration for this type of cooler. With a sandwich style case, this airflow dynamic is unconventional. And, and for those of you building in a sandwich style case, especially the Terra, my recommendation would be to flip the fan around to intake from the side panel. And the idea here is to draw cool ambient air from the outside in, and that uh, gets you the best performance. I did test with this in the out of the box configuration, and that was 2.3 degrees hotter with the 7800X3D uh, for a CPU only test. And, and when you have a combined CPU and GPU usage scenario like gaming, you could see even more impact because your ambient air is going to be even hotter inside the case and you're gonna be pulling that through the heat sinks. And that's not necessarily a good configuration. So for many of you, the fan underneath configuration is going to be the mode of interest since let's face it, even 72 millimeters is pushing it for a lot of the cases that you might choose to deploy in. For example, uh, 73 millimeters is the max for form D T1 V2 with, and you have a two slot card. And that makes this L12S by 77 not very useful for that case, unless you truly have a sub uh, two slot card and you can shift it uh, so you can have enough space for this. But uh, for the Fractal Terra two slot configuration gives you 43 millimeters for the card. Uh, so it'll fit cards like this 4070 Founders Edition. And this revision is actually perfectly applicable here because when you do that mode, you get exactly 77 millimeters on the CPU cooler. And Nocto's own promotional material features this case, well, not this specific case, but this finish of the Terra and looks very good in here. And uh, so this also happens to be the case that I'm going to focus in on for this review. So let's take a look here. Okay, so that additional five millimeters, it gives you a few advantages assuming you have the clearance. So for one, it increases the amount of space underneath the heatsink. And that's gonna give you a bit more flexibility for insulation. Uh, for example, with this MSI B650i board, that's enough room to run the heatsink when it's overlapping the rear IO area heatsink. And that can give you unlimited RAM clearance if you truly have a tall RAM kit. And I do take note that in the Terra, actually a good portion of the heatsink on this side would then be covered by the solid portion of the side panel, which is absolutely not optimal. If you have a reasonably sized RAM kit 
lower than 44 millimeters tall you can just flip it the other way and just make sure that your front panel cables over here are well managed so that they'll sit underneath the cooler or you can also do like i've done here with the horizontal heat fins uh, and that's done with the heat fin bend at the bottom and this configuration is absolutely fine in general you will want to sync up the heat fin orientation with whatever case you're using if you know if you know the predominant airflow here but for the Terra it's actually not going to matter too much you don't actually have a case fan that's shaping the airflow too much because you only have one fan here and all this is really doing is encouraging intake at the GPU at the power supply and also at the CPU cooler and with the fan underneath the heatsink it's not as if you'll have exhaust being partially directed out the back or towards the case fan. The fit with the motherboard is going to dictate your choice more than anything else. But there is one orientation that you'll typically want to avoid, and that is when your heat pipe bends are at the top of whatever case you're using. And that tends to be a suboptimal orientation. Of, uh, although if you really don't have any other choice for some reason, it's not exactly the end of the world in, in terms of performance. It's just not as good. So in this case, if you were to put the heat pipe bends uh, on the top here, then that's not as good. For this board and a suitable RAM kit, this is actually how I would set it up because in this orientation it doesn't overlap the board's heatsink and it only overlaps one slot of RAM so you don't really have to worry about the front panel cables and here it's actually uh, not being obstructed by the solid part of the side panel either. With Intel you have a square mounting pattern so you can just rotate your mounting bars to the orientation that you want. For AM4 and AM5, like I am set up here with AM5, you get two sets of mounting hardware. So for a vertical heat fin installation, you'll just choose the top and bottom bars like these. And uh, for the horizontal heat fins, you, you're gonna choose the left and right bars. For AMD, this is Noctua's new offset mounting style of uh, mounting bar. <laughs> that means you have the option to offset the cooler lower. Uh, well, in this case, it's actually going to be higher, but it's going to sit lower on the IHS when you're looking at it right side up. And, and that's for not, nothing other than better alignment to the center of the CCDs on the AM5's CPU layout. Now, you can still mount it at the zero setting, but I've tested that on this channel if you're curious, and I'll leave the link for that video up here. Uh, just, you know, take a look and, and see if that's something you want to do. Another advantage here of the higher clearance, though, is uh, additional airflow underneath the heatsink as well as closer positioning relative to the side panel. So not only is there more space underneath for better airflow, it's also closer to the outer panel and that's going to draw air more directly from the outside. If you happen to be in configuration number one anyway, which is for a two slot card in the Terra, the regular L12S will have less airflow underneath the heatsink and the fan, and it will also leave a small air gap between the heatsink and the side panel. So that's not as good as this one. Uh, whereas the L12S by 77 will close that gap and you're basically intaking from the side panel or I guess the outside air uh, more directly. Uh, with fan on top coolers, in this case, you do have to be very careful being right up against the side panel. And in my initial review of this case, I noted that when you have a fan close to the side panel, you're going to get turbulent noise. But with the L12S, because the fan is underneath, and I'll demonstrate this later, it's not at all a concern. Being able to run this cooler in the Terra will require a 43 millimeter or thinner card that's also narrower than 131 millimeters. That's what allows 43 millimeters of thickness. Uh, but in the build I did recently, this was with a Founders Edition 4070, which is perfect. And uh, so if you're using something like this, 4060 Ti, 4070 Super Founders Edition, this cooler is ideal. But if your card is thicker, then you won't have this uh, as a choice here. So first off, I did want to compare against the regular L12S like for like, and for that I did go ahead and test in the NR200 test system on my Legacy 3700X, which is where I tested the L12S before. I just wanted to get an idea here at identical fan speeds. Compared to the L12S, the addition of two heat pipes and the additional clearance does result in a significant improvement over the regular L12S, so much so that it even beats out the regular L12S in the fan on top or high profile configuration. Noctua rates the L12S by 77 version slightly better. So on their standardized rating system, the NSPR, it uh, scores a hundred versus the L12S at 88. 
I did want to turn to testing in the Terra, which is the main focus here. And I tested here with the 7800X 3D, which is my go-to high-end gaming CPU for Terra builds and even a more production oriented system. The 7800X 3D would be a good match due to just how efficient it runs and how easy it is to cool with the low profile cooler that you are pretty much mandated to in this case. Noise normalized testing here. CPU is drawing around 75 watts here. Up against the stock ID cooling IS67 XT, which is also a six heat pipe cooler. So it's a little bit lower, but it does put up a very favorable result. And that's a 26 megahertz benefit over that cooler. Of course, with the IS67 XT, you could ostensibly go out and get the same stock knock to a fan, the uh, NFA 12 by 15. So let's just test that out as well. And in fact, that doesn't improve things too much here because the stock ID cooling fan, it matches up quite well with this cooler and it works quite well. So one other thing you can do with this lower IS67 is uh, throw on a 25 millimeter fan because when you take this heatsink, and throw on a 10 millimeter thicker fan, you get to basically 77 millimeters. But I will absolutely caution against this for the reason of noise, and I'll demonstrate that shortly. And that is unreasonably loud. But if we go ahead and just ignore the sound pressure level with both fans at the same RPM, performance wise, this is as good as you can get the IS67 XT in this case. And even then, it is behind stock L12S by 77 by a tad, but they, they basically performed about the same uh, for practical purposes. So there is a very big difference between having the fan directly against the side panel where it's obstructed by the fluted cut side panel vents. And uh, that different difference is about six decibels between open and closed. It is tremendous. So take a quick listen and you'll see why you don't recommend that type of arrangement in this case. So when I saw this cooler at first, the gears started turning in my head because I knew what the extra five millimeters meant. You can, ram depending, run an NFA 12 by 25 underneath this heatsink. And the reason why this is helpful is because underneath the heatsink, it doesn't really matter what you put underneath it as opposed to, you know, adding thickness on top because the heatsink has already broken up the air and therefore you're less likely to have turbulence induced noise like you just heard with the IS67 and a thick fan against the side panel. The clips that Noctua supplies, these will work with a 25 millimeter fan as well. And that's cool because you don't have to switch fan clips or get a new set. Uh, they'll work just fine. Uh, based on the ramp kit I have here, which is Kingston's Fury DDR5, 35 millimeters is the maximum height of your RAM for this type of configuration. And this ramp kit happens to be that tall. It barely clears the fan with all the vibration dampeners uh, removed. Uh, the fan clip does touch a little bit, but it's absolutely fine. Two things you'll notice if you deploy it this way is the alignment to the mounting hardware. It's a little bit trickier because you don't have the line of sight that you might with the NFA 12 by 15, but uh, with the Terra, you can kind of look through the bottom. So if you just line it up and eyeball it that way, you'll be absolutely fine mounting it. But the other thing, which is a more of more concern is boy, oh boy, is this setup choked off underneath the fan. Of course, it's not surprising, right? Because you pretty much max out the clearance under this thing. Uh, so that's it. You're, you're getting what you asked for in, in some sense. But uh, performance of this combo at max RPM because of that is actually worse than the L12S by 77 with the stock fan, but it's important to note that it's a decibel quieter and with the advantage of having a much less offensive noise quality and the slim fan tends to be more high frequency of course if we had to dial down the slim fans rpm to uh, match the noise level of the thicker fan the performance would be worse so current gen cpus that this one would be good for i think your non-x ryzen and non-k intel SKUs are great ryzen 7600x 7800x 3d would also be good candidates uh, for K Intel, your 14600K is as high as I would go. The 13 and 14700Ks are really power hungry, so I would recommend against using those with this cooler, especially in this case. Um, something like the Ryzen 7700X is going to be marginal. You're not going to get all the performance out of it at a peak 
power draw, but um, if you're just gaming with it, that, that can be a choice here. But I think if you're comparing 7700X and 7800X 3D in a gaming scenario, there's not really a reason to get the 7700X. So it's not gonna happen in this case, but if you wanted to, you can slap another NFA 12 by 25 on top with two of those push pull and open air. But I don't really don't think that makes too much sense unless you have a case with exactly that much clearance and no more. Um, in cases like the M1 Evo, where you have more clearance than that, you're actually just better off running a C14S, especially based on how much the combo with uh, two NFA 12 by 25s would set you back. The C14S is actually just cheaper and it's, it's gonna be better. So don't, uh, don't do this. I did wanna share another set of sound samples here. This set is really just to demonstrate that the cooler doesn't cause turbulent noises with the Terra's side panels. And the most evident comparison will be between the IS67 that you heard with the fan up against the side panel. The same RPM for both fans. And uh, we'll just compare the two with this setup. Because so personally, I would switch to the NFA 12 by 25 just for the sake of noise, but you have to run the numbers, right? So this cooler comes in at $75 US, which is $10 more than the regular L12S. So if you slap on the NFA 12 by 25, you're now around $105, which that's a lot of money for a low profile cooling combo. And of course you do have a spare NFA 12 by 15, right? Uh, but either way, that's not cheap. And uh, the IS67XT that I showed you in this build originally, that's around $35 US. So it's a much better fit for a mid-range build. And the performance is perfectly adequate with the 7800 XT. So this is a great cooler. If you want a little bit better performance or you are happen to be limited to position number two in the Terra and you can't get the L12S by 77, then the regular L12S will make a lot of sense as well. But if the stars align, meaning that you can run position number one in this case, you can get a bit more RAM and board clearance flexibility with the stock L12S by 77 because it's an absolute solid cooler. And for the ultimate high-end Terra build, the souped up config like I did here. I think this has just what you need to tie it all up and this is gonna be as much cooling as you can get in this case. So I've tried to cover everything that you might wanna know about this, but uh, if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. And please also help the channel out by using the links down below. Also, please give a like, make sure you are subscribed since it really helps out the channel. And big thanks for watching today.